You are listening to the Push Media Podcast Network. This is good shit. Let me go ahead and set the record straight. Now, we are too old. We are too smart. We are too motherfucking good to be believing in shit that don't make no sense. Now, pretty Miss Boo Fang, here in the front row, I am here to look you in your eyes and say, you are too smart to be believing in evolution. They say people came from monkeys, but then the question is this. Players and pimps, I am here to ask you, if we evolved from monkeys, why the fuck are there still monkeys? You stupid son of a bitch. This shit right here. Okay, that's the end of the Cat Williams impression. Um, But it felt cogent. It felt germane. Because Cat is a man ahead of his time. Cat is a G. Cat is honestly top five, in my opinion. I think he is devastatingly underrated, criminally undervalued, and not represented or given his fair respect. Now, you could argue Cat has made a lot of enemies with his erratic behavior, such as driving an ATV into a CVS in Chicago, claiming the Illuminati was after him, or filming a very important for his career Netflix special in front of Jacksonville, Florida, and opening with 30 minutes of Jacksonville, Florida material. So he is a man who might get in his own way, but he is also a guy who, despite the showmanship, the glitz, the glam, the fur, the satin, he's a pimp who has used his motherfucking noggin. Because it is a good question. If you were to ask, if we came from monkeys, then why are there still monkeys, you stupid son of a bitch? Now, it might be contagious to ask that question with that inflection, but it is a valid question whether you use his voice or not. And I advise most of you, do not try it, because it is a very thin line between good impression and, wow, you're definitely racist. Um, And I'd like to think I fell somewhere in the former, but we continue. It is a valid question. Why are there still monkeys if we evolved from them? Because evolution, as we're taught it, most of us, I would imagine, if you're not from Kentucky and went to a school that believed we had pet dinosaurs or Jesus was an American... Most people are taught that evolution happened in the sense like there were monkeys. Uh, See, I almost felt myself slipping back into the Cat Williams voice. I was almost like there were monkeys, but there were monkeys, primates, walking around and shit, doing things, doing monkey stuff. And then eventually, you know, they started to stand up. And then eventually they turned into cavemen and they had tools and shit and they did caveman things until eventually we continued to evolve a little more and we became, we went through the stages of humans. We were Cro-Magnum, then we were Neanderthals, then we were Homo sapiens, which we are today. And we're taught that evolution is a very obviously infallible thing, how dare I question, but it is also a very linear thing which I just don't think there is evidence for. And I think the evidence that is glaring, glaringly looking you in the face can be seen if you just think for a second, like Cat Williams just did. Now, is Cat Williams a biologist? He might actually be the greatest one in the fucking world. I would imagine he just hasn't tried it yet. So who is to say? But he's probably not a talented biologist. And there are probably plenty of scientific and deflating and vibe killing mood killer don't invite this guy to your party explanations as to why there are still monkeys you stupid son of a bitch now the explanation could be that evolution is not in fact linear in that we're seeing monkeys still in the world today because as we evolved there were still the species that we evolved from left on earth now That doesn't really jive with what you were taught in school, even if you were that quick to believe me, which would be ridiculous. Why would you not do your own research? But that doesn't really jive with what we were taught because there aren't Cro-Magnums, there aren't Neanderthals, there aren't cavemen walking around on the earth still. And if we evolved from them, wouldn't they still be around if we evolved from monkeys and monkeys are still around? That seems like a logical inference to draw. There should be entire countries, arguably, full of just Neanderthals or full of Cro-Magnum, full of Australia Pisigus or whatever the fuck the new thing is. And that's really why I'm starting to talk about this, because there was a massive discovery in the field of archaeology, said no one ever, right? But for a few dorks, there was actually a massive discovery in the field of archaeology. We found fossils in Stein Forken Cave in South Africa, which dated 
the earliest known human skeleton we had previously, which was Lucy, if you know, which was estimated to be about two million years old, we found new skeletal remains of a certain species of human, just not to get into the nitty gritty, but the term is Australopithecus, which is a stupid name. Just think of them as like cavemen. We're going to say Neanderthals for the rest of the episode. So we found fossils that just two, three days ago predated the earliest skeletal remains we had by an additional 3.4 to 3.6 million years. In one simple discovery, in one effort of digging, we have unearthed skeletal remains that have added millions, nearly three a million additional years to the human timeline of history. Think of the implications of that for a second. And I know you might come to this podcast for warmongering about fear, about countries pointing missiles at one another, uh, viruses spreading, but I'm here to just give you a fucking lesson today, folks. You're here to learn something pretty interesting. Now, forgetting Russia, forgetting pandemics and monkeypox, which the WHO is considering making an emergency again for the fourth time this year, forgetting all of those things, let's learn some shit. We have just added... Three million years to the timeline of human history. Now, to briefly refresh, I would imagine most of you have the understanding that human history went about 10,000 years back to people kind of resembling us. About 8,000 years ago, we had Sumer or Sumeria. I'm still not positive how to say that, which was referred to as the cradle of civilization. That's where we had cuneiform, first written language, essentially the cradle of civilization. It was the first civilization that decided to say, we are a civilization. We are going to write things down. We are going to collectively unify some thoughts that essentially create the first cultured civilization. And that's currently Afghanistan. So that was a poor place to pick, right? I mean, geez, could you imagine having to live there? Um, But it used to have glory back when there were literally eight people on the earth. But moving forward, Sumer happened as the first birthplace of modern humans, right? And then from there, we have ancient Egypt, which is about 6,000 years ago. And then, you know, the rest of human history up until today, and then whatever you're worried about or ate for lunch. That's kind of the timeline that was taught to everyone, or at least the timeline that everyone is familiar with when I refresh their brains with the lies they were told by people who had no idea what they were saying to children. Because there were three million years added to the human timeline in one discovery today. Is that not enough evidence for people to at least think for a second, maybe I don't even know what I'm talking about. There are hints. We are able to collect evidence and do scientific observations that might suggest or lead to a conclusion about biology or some other nature or state within our universe, but we don't fucking know. And do you know how we don't know? Because we all thought this about human beings, and now there's an additional three million years we can't account for. Three million years. There hasn't been a million years in recorded years history yet. Think about what the fuck that means. Something had to happen. There had to be events, a whole heap of them, to fill three million years. Are we open yet to the idea that maybe the very childlike and almost Christopher Columbus-level naivete that we accept our modern human history timeline is, in fact, hogwash bullshit? We haven't the slightest clue. But what we do have is some evidence that is contrary to what I think most people are under the impression is the truth. So allow me to start sounding fucking crazy. We are essentially monkeys, right? The understanding is we evolved Homo sapiens. We used to be Neanderthals and cavemen, but we slaughtered them all. We killed them and the Homo sapiens evolved and they won. And now that's why everyone is what that is right now. That is not exactly possible because if we were to have slaughtered these previous versions of men, the cavemen like Cro-Magnum and Neanderthals, there wouldn't be any evidence other than their fossil remains to suggest that they exist, right? Because if these are your enemies, if these are the people that lost and got the shortest stick on the evolutionary draw, you probably wouldn't intermingle, mate with them, and have... DNA directly traced to early prehistoric man present in the population today, 
right? You wouldn't do that. If these are the people that Charles Darwin would deem losers in the genetic lottery, and we are here to slaughter them because that's what's best for the species, you wouldn't pick a few of them to mate and have children with. They are losers. That would be like a dog deciding to mate with a rat. It just simply will not happen, right? You would think. But what if I were to tell you that there is roughly 13% of the population walking around on Earth today with a very specific, observable under a microscope type of genetic marker that is specifically traced to prehistoric humans. The same prehistoric humans that we thought were the losers of the genetic lottery and were snuffed out without the chance to evolve like the rest of the Homo sapiens. And I have proof for this because I know I've probably lost most of you. But thankfully, I am not someone who cares. If you have, if you know your blood type, which most people don't, but I highly recommend you find that out. One, for medical reasons. And two, because actually probably I don't really give a fuck personally. So I guess it's really just one reason. Medically, you should know what your blood type is. But anyone who has a negative blood type, that means... And that could be A negative, B negative, AB negative, O negative. Anyone who has a negative blood type means that their blood literally lacks a specific protein called the rhesus protein. I don't know if I've pronounced that correctly, but you can look up how to, how to pronounce it yourself. But it's spelled with an R and an H. Any word like that is very tricky. But I digress. So the negative part when you hear a negative blood type refers to somebody lacking a specific protein in their blood. Now, this specific protein, the RH protein or RH factor, is universally across the board found in every single species of primate. Now, this, among other evidence to be fair, was presented as a case proving that we Homo sapiens today evolved from monkeys of yesteryear. Now, sure, if we evolved from monkeys, there would be some DNA similar, and we share a bunch of DNA with, with monkeys. Specifically, this very specific antigen protein found in the bloodstream. So that would obviously be a link connecting Homo sapiens and monkeys, right? Sure. However, if you're someone who does have negative blood, we can't link you to monkeys. That's it. It, that I, Believe me, I, I'm sure you're probably thinking, well, give me something else. There isn't. That's literally where the connecting information stops. If you have a negative blood type, which is about 13% of the population, what that means is that you lack a specific protein that is found in every other type of person who has positive blood or used to be a monkey. Now, that means positive blood types are people who probably evolved from monkeys. But what the flying fuck are the other ones? What are the negative blood type people? Because another interesting thing about negative blood is that it is believed, and this is according to scientists and geneticists and people other than me who actually are doing research and not just willy-nilly grabbing facts, it is believed that negative blood was first introduced by the Neanderthals. Now, if the Neanderthals lost, they were the genetic losers. They had to be slaughtered in the name of progress. Why would we have made it with some of them? And the people that did probably were the ones that were able to carry this very specific type of blood being negative, RH negative blood. Now, RH negative blood still exists today and people still walk around with it. But these people, we specifically can't link to monkeys. We can link Homo sapiens with positive blood to monkeys. But we can't, I would imagine, logically, that means we can't link Neanderthals to monkeys. Now, what the fuck? Hold on, man. If we are to believe that there were monkeys, then cave people, then us, and we can link us to monkeys, shouldn't we obviously be able to link earlier versions of us, the stages in between us and monkey, to monkey? What that means is that the Neanderthals, the group of early humans that introduced the genetic expression of negative blood, which is currently perplexing the best scientists in the world. I mean, literally perplexing the shit out of them. I'm not joking when I say the greatest biologists at Harvard, MIT, their explanation for the people on Earth today with negative blood is pretty much fucking aliens for all I know. Fuck all. 
I'm not kidding. That's truly the best working explanation right now. That's how confusing it is to science currently. Now, if that specific thing comes from Neanderthals, who were the, the lower form of human, who were cave-dwelling idiots so directly close to monkeys on the timeline history, why is it that they don't have any of the genetic markers that you would link to monkeys that we as homo sapiens have? This seems to lead to a very unsettling idea that possibly humans are not exactly one species in the nice, clean, cut way we would like to believe. If there are people who can be linked to monkeys, and that's, I'm not, listen, I should be very clear. I'm not here to disprove evolution. I am not someone who disagrees with evolution. I am not someone who believes we lived with dinosaurs. I am not a Mormon. I am not a moron. It's kind of, those words are interchangeable to me. I'm not here to disprove evolution in any way whatsoever. In fact, I don't find evolution to be incongruous with faith or any religion at all, to be honest with you. There are if you were to just think philosophically, which I know is probably something no one even understands what that means, but if there were to be a God, for argument's sake, and this God of whatever religion you had made everything, if everything were to be getting made, there would be a process observable in which everything is being made. You, you follow me? So evolution doesn't disprove God. It could just be this God made everything, and evolution is how he makes it. You stupid motherfucker. I just wanted to say that before we go any further. And I continue to sound even more crazy to you. I just wanted to get out of the way. I am not here to disprove evolution. I am not here to Bible thump. I am not here to Quran thump. I'm not sure if that's allowed. I don't know if that's what Charlie Hedbo did. But we'll get back on track. So, if we supposedly came from monkeys... And some proof of that would be, hey, there's this protein in everyone's blood that also is shared in all primates. That is pretty strong evidence for evolution, sure. But then that means there's about 13% of the population we can't account for. Now, that population are the people that have Rh negative blood. Now, it does seem strange that the thing that explains what this type of human is is not found in a very small group of them. Just logically, if you were to take out any idea value, any concepts presented to you that might sound nuts, if you were to be capable of holding judgment for a moment, that seems to imply that the 13% of people walking around Earth might be a literal different species than the other 87% with the protein in their blood. All right, now I'm sure I sound nuts already, suggesting there's more than one species of human. And I am certainly not here to do any phrenology shit, believe me. However, just based on the definitions of available biology, it seems to suggest they are, right? And to make matters weirder, let's get into some of the characteristics of people with Rh negative blood. Now, one of the first and most glaringly shocking things that I found was that Mothers with Rh negative blood, they need, if they were to become pregnant, they need to become pregnant by a father also capable of producing an offspring with Rh negative blood. Because if a Rh negative mother becomes pregnant with a Rh positive baby, there is, medically speaking, a certainty of a miscarriage. Is that not fucking insane to you? There is a specific factor, and we know what it is. It's literally the RH factor in blood, that if an unborn child has positive blood, an RH-negative mother, against her own will, involuntarily, regardless of which state you live in and what side of the abortion debate you fall on, a miscarriage will happen. It is so foreign to the system of the RH-negative mother that the body literally rejects its own child. Now, doesn't that also seem to suggest maybe it's almost a different species? A seahorse can't get a zebra pregnant, and you better believe someone's tried, because they're two different species. It cannot happen. It's almost like a seahorse trying to fuck a zebra has just the same statistical likelihood of successfully producing offspring as a RH-negative mother 
and an RH positive unborn child. That's nuts. That seems like a pretty easy comparison to draw, but I'm insane and not the news, obviously. But, well, you know, let's, let's just get a little crazier. So these 13% of the population folks walking around with the RH negative blood, they survived a pregnancy because they needed to or they would have literally died. And now these are the people walking around with the cavemen DNA. These are the people that have something that we can look at under a microscope that we can specifically trace to the genetic losers of the evolutionary timeline, the cavemen, the Cro-Magnum and the Neanderthal, the idiots, the dumb cavemen who didn't do anything besides get eaten by saber-toothed tigers and, you know, live in a cave. The 13% of RH negative people today share that live in a cave DNA. So you would think just logically if the cavemen lived in a cave and did caveman things, which are dumb caveman things, that the people walking around today who have the same genetic marker as these dumb cavemen, that they themselves would be some of the most remarkably stupid people you have ever had the misfortune of coming across. Right? Logically, that would stand to reason. Well, what if I were to tell you that people with RH negative blood consistently within overwhelming majority of all of the people surveyed across countless studies, countless colleges, and countless countries, people with RH negative blood have a few unusual characteristics. And these characteristics are as follows. Among them, lower body temperature, pale skin, reddish hair, looking at me, extra vertebrae, and, uh, by the way, motherfucking clairvoyance. You heard that correctly. People with RH negative blood purportedly believe to not only have a few biological, you know, extemporaneous things like a lower than average body temperature, an extra vertebrae in the spine, but they also overwhelmingly make up the people who claim to be psychic, literally. Is that not insane to you? So this weird little group of people that have this weird little freak DNA marker that we can link to the dumb cave people who lost the genetic evolutionary timeline lottery. The people today related to them have above average intellect, extra vertebrae, and claim to be psychic. And possibly the government keeps a registry of all RH negative born babies in case they want to incorporate them into MK Ultra later on, and they might be the lost tribe of Cain. But again, I'm insane. And I only felt an obligation to, to deep dive on this because as an O negative blood type person with red hair and blue eyes, I am a genetic accident. I probably shouldn't exist. I would frighten Hitler based on appearance. I am the equivalent, genetically speaking, of thunder having a child with lightning and then getting struck by lightning during giving birth by... That was a dumb metaphor, but you understand my point. I felt a deep obligation to present these odd genetic anomalies because I myself am one. And as I were doing a little bit of research, I was fucking perplexed and honestly just dumbfounded at how little I think anyone knows about anything. Because there are about 13% of people today pretty directly traced and linked and related to cavemen. Now, you would think cavemen are stupid. Wouldn't the people today who have some cavemen in them also be stupid? Well, that stands to reason, but it turns out they might be fucking psychic. And this factor, the RH negative factor, the caveman factor... Is the, is the very thing that prevents evolution from being a closed case, from being a textbook, this is what happened. Because evolution is a very logical and airtight explanation for why there's 87% of the people walking around today, but it does not explain, it literally does not account for the 13% of people with negative blood. That's perplexing. If you are one of the people with negative blood, you are literally one of the people preventing evolution from being accepted, and you are responsible for overturning Roe v. Wade. How do you feel now? You pig. That's bananas. So I think it is important to consider, and I'm not drawing any conclusions, I'm just pointing out shit, because that's what I do. I'm not here to think, I am here to say. But I think... <laughs> I think what we can say is we don't know shit. We really don't know shit. 
We thought we knew shit, and it's not really your fault for not actually knowing shit because the people who told you shit were telling you the wrong shit. Now, who told them their shit is some shit that is to be debated, but I'm here to say my shit, and my shit is the word shit. Shit, shit, shit. (laughs) That's funny. The long and short of it is, folks, we found a skeleton about three million years older than anything we have ever found before. Now, you can choose to think, that's cool, and then just go about your day. Or you can stop and think for a second and realize, holy shit, that's three million years that need to be explained or accounted for. What the fuck happened in those three million years? And then if that was you, if you could relate to being someone like that, or at least have that level of curiosity... All you have to do is a very, very cursory level of research to find that this, the whole human timeline has glaring holes in it, really big gaps. I'm talking the type of gap that your mom does on Friday night, okay? Holla. Okay, Miss Boo Thang. What I'm saying is we don't know shit, because I thought I knew shit, but we have people who used to be cavemen who also might be psychic and more intelligent than the people that evolved from monkeys. Oh, by the way, about 13% of our population, we have no fucking idea where they came from. And the best working explanation, and again, this is literally from scientists at Harvard and MIT, the best explanation as to the shared common ancestor that explains people with Rh negative blood is literally, truly fucking aliens. And then you can go crazier and then read weirder things on, like, the second page of Google and read, you know, stories by James Casbolt and other people that go on to discuss Project Mannequin and why governments throughout the world would be keeping an eye on people with a specific type of blood. In name, RH negative specifically. Why would they be keeping an eye on the people born with the caveman DNA? If cavemen were so dumb and lost... Why does it seem like there's a special value placed on, at the very least, keeping track of the people that have this thing? You know, interesting. It's very interesting. I have no conclusions to offer you, but I have a whole lot of information that I hope you hear and do something with, or not. But some people have decided to take action against this weird shit, because the Georgia Guidestones, which are, uh, there's something I've discussed before, they're these giant fucking stone tablets in Georgia, because people aren't good at naming things, but they were scary for a lot of reasons. They were often referred to as America's Stonehenge. Now, Stonehenge is a beautiful thing that isn't just a wallpaper on your desktop computer. It was probably a, you know, site where pagans sacrificed people, but let's not get into it. So keeping that in mind, American Stonehenge were the Georgia Guidestones. Now, the Georgia Guidestones were this mysterious monument that were erected over the course of 20 to 30 years. It was a process. And the guy that paid for it and had very specific detailed instructions and designs and and blueprints for them was a guy who went by the name of R.C. Christian. Now, this was clearly a gnome de plume, which is French for your mom's douche, I think. Maybe it was a pseudonym. Eh, Maybe I should figure out what gnome de plume means, and maybe your mom should douche more. But R.C. Christian strolled into Georgia and said, I would like to erect this giant stone monument, and I would like to inscribe on it the rules for which humanity should be guided to ensure prosperity. Literally, the first rule on the Georgia Guidestones was maintain humanity's population to under 500,000. Now, that was just the literal first commandment on these creepy, creepy stones. Now, these stones, which have creeped me out since I found out about them, were destroyed. They were leveled. They were bamboozled and blown to the ground, which is great. It's mysterious. It's a little strange because originally they were attacked with like this bomb that went off the night before, but it only partially destroyed them. And then the actual police came in and decided to level the whole site for safety or whatever. I'm sure at some point the Israeli special forces will be brought in to investigate the scene. But what's interesting is that the Georgia Guidestones, America's Stonehenge, is that R.C. Christian is not just your mom's douche in French. It is clearly an allusion to Christian Rosencrantz, who is, of course, the probably... uh, Actually, why would I say he is, of course, as if literally a single person listening to this knows this person at all? There is, and I mean this, a statistically less than 0% chance anyone knows who Christian Rosencrantz is, but I say, of course, because I am courteous to my fellow man. So anyway, 
Christian Rosencrantz is, of course, the name alluding to the most likely nonfiction guy who went out, you know, in search of deep secrets or something gay. I don't know. But he came back and he started the Rosicrucians. And the Rosicrucians, if you're crazy like me, are essentially the, um, the, the real haughty totty formal, uptight, cloak and dagger sect of the Illuminati that's really gay and into like role play and recreates pyramids in Pennsylvania. That's true. I'm, I've literally been there. They're there. Go check it out. But Rosicrucians have existed throughout the Middle Ages up until arguably who knows. Um, but th- for the people who are really, really into conspiracy shit, the Rosicrucians are to a lot of people considered to be the, 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 the fucking crux of the Illuminati. And the Illuminati is real. I don't give a fuck how that makes me sound because I've clearly stopped caring how my opinions make me sound. But the Illuminati is real. And I'm not saying the Illuminati in the Dan Brown shit or the Illuminati in the Assassin's Creed video games or the fake Illuminati that like Jay-Z pretends to be a part of. I'm talking about literally in the 1790s, Adam Weizop created an organization while studying under the Jesuits, called the Illuminati. It is a real thing, it's documented. You can read his fucking charter for the organization. So, I don't want to hear shit, the Illuminati's not real, because it literally is. Whatever incarnation you have in your mind that Dan Brown put there has nothing to do with the fact that Adam Weizop was a real guy who was in with the Jesuits, who created an organization and outlined steps as to how to build it. Now, a lot of people think the Rosicrucians at some point were kind of usurped into this Illuminati or whatever, and now they exist as like the really regal, fancy, dare I say, British version of the Illuminati. Now, the guy R.C. Christian, I say all this to say, the random mysterious dude who strolled into Georgia who demanded we build very, very creepy monuments about limiting the Earth's population used the fake name R.C. Christian, which is clearly an allusion to the Rosicrucians. And then you could take it a step further and say, well, I guess this guy was in the Illuminati, which I'm not doing because I'm crazy. But I could see if you were to think that, I wouldn't judge you. Now, it's kind of good that those rocks, those stupid stones were destroyed. I don't want them up. But who decided to take that into their own hands? Because it is not easy to get to those stones on your own. In fact, that area is heavily guarded. There is cameras out the ass. There's cameras in mailboxes there, homie. So whoever blew it up really had an issue with it, or on the flip side, could be someone who had permission to blow it up, could be someone who wanted it blown up. It could have been time. Because who's to say? This is the fucking Illuminati we're dealing with, right? Who knows what their motivations are? And interestingly enough, There was also instructions on the Georgia Guidestone about a very specific time capsule being placed under the Georgia Guidestones. Now, the instructions were never made clear as to when this should be opened or even what was inside of it, but it is very clearly documented that there is a time capsule under the Georgia Guidestones, under the giant stones that, say, limit the population that were built by the guy who was clearly in the Illuminati, but, you know, not crazy. All I'm saying is we don't fucking know anything. We don't know our history. We don't know our very modern, recent history, like what happened in Georgia with these weird stones that said kill everybody in the 40s, and we don't know what happened with cave-dwelling humans three million years ago. But the fact that the timeline of human history has just added three million years with one discovery, who is to say what is what? And to be clear, that is not to say the moral here is some postmodern bullshit where you decide what the meaning is. That's not true either. But that's what you should be telling people who say, this is where we came from. This is what you are, and this is the science to back it up. Because that science is not there. It's there in some cases, but it's not there in others. Which, in my opinion, is a good thing, because I'm not here to disprove science. I love science. I fuck with science. Science is pretty cool. Now, I'm also someone who is pretty gullible. I love the idea of weird metaphysical esoteric shit, and I'm pretty sure the government is tracking, or at the very least, recruiting me for something because of my blood type. I don't know what to make of it, but the more I learn 
the more I become just an uncomfortably level of cerebrally aware of just how little anyone knows anything. You stupid son of a bitch. (laughs) 